All right, some big health care headlines just since the beginning of the week. Those include four workers in Washington state who are believed to have been infected with bird flu. Washington would become the sixth state to identify human cases this year. Separately, Novo Nordisk's oral diabetes drug cut heart-related risks in patients, and we're still following drama around copycat weight loss drugs. Joining us right now to talk about all of this is former FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He, of course, is also a CNBC contributor. And, and Scott, where should we start with this? Uh, you want to start with the, the weight loss drugs, or would you like to start with uh, what's happening with avian flu? Oh. That works. We can start with uh, the weight loss drugs, certainly. Okay. Uh, Novo Nordisk, this new oral pill that they have, uh, looks like it is cutting risk of heart disease and, and many other things. This has come as a surprise? No, it's not a surprise. It's a good result. Remember, with this pill, Rebelsis, you're dealing with a much lower dose of the active ingredient, semaglutide, than with the injectable formulations, the subcutaneous formulations. So even though this pill is 14 milligrams, versus the 2.4 milligrams that you're getting in Wagovi, the bioavailability, how much of the drugs actually getting into the blood is substantially less. So only about 0.4 to 1% of the drug from these oral formulations get into the blood versus about 89% when it comes to the subcutaneous formulations. So to see this kind of risk reduction in cardiac events, severe cardiac events like heart attacks and strokes, with much less exposure to the drug, even though it's a 14 milligram dose, much less is getting into the blood and the patients are being exposed to less of the active ingredient. That's a pretty good result. Remember, you saw a 20 percent risk reduction with Wagovi in cardiovascular events. That was at the 2.4 milligram dose. That was in obese patients. This study was done in patients with diabetes, but weren't necessarily overweight. It is. Does that suggest, just as a doctor, I know they want to get to these, these pills instead, the oral versions of the drug, because a lot of people are averse to having a needle injection. Would you think that it's better, if you're not afraid of needles, to do the needles so that you could have a lower dosage that doesn't go through your body? Or you think it's just as, just as well to go along with the oral? Well, look, the dose, the 14 milligram dose is only approved in diabetes. Novo is actually testing a 25 milligram dose and a 50 milligram dose. That's been in phase three development for a while right now. People suspected that they were going to have results sooner. Uh, perhaps they'll have them shortly. But they're testing higher doses for weight loss. So to achieve the weight loss, that kind of weight reduction that you're seeing with Wagovi, you're going to need a much higher formulation, a much higher dose hmm. of this oral drug. And, you know, it is possible that at those doses, 25 or 50 milligrams, you're going to unmask more of the GI side effects. So that's TBD. We have to see the data on that. I think right now, if you're looking to use these drugs for weight loss, you could certainly achieve... Uh, a higher availability of the drug in the blood uh, with these subcutaneous formulations. And as I said, the oral dose at the 14 milligram uh, dosage strength isn't approved for weight loss. You're not going to see a lot of weight reduction with that low dose. The other companies that are formulating uh, oral versions of GLP-1 agonists aren't using semaglutide. They're coming up with uh, synthetic molecules that also have the same effect at that receptor. So they'll be much easier to manufacture and formulate at higher doses. One of the challenges Novo faces right now is that they're cannibalizing a lot of their active ingredients, semaglutide, with these oral formulations. And as you know, there's a shortage of those drug products. Correct. And so by manufacturing these pills, and if they do go forward with a 25 or 50 milligram dose, that's going to cannibalize the injectable formulations even further. Well, let, let's talk about the shortage because that leads into the next topic. The idea of the shortages has been where the FDA has allowed compounding of some of these um, make-it-yourself drugs because there's not enough to go around. Um, now you've got Lilly with a lawsuit going after some of these compounding companies. What, what, what is the right suggestion there? If these drugs are hard to come by, is it right to allow the compounding to take place? Well, look. The FDA does allow compounding in limited circumstances under certain conditions when there's a shortage of a drug. FDA had stepped forward and said these drugs were no longer in shortage. Tazepatide, the active ingredient in Lilly's drug, was no longer in shortage, got sued, and then stepped back about a week ago in the context of litigation saying we'll reconsider whether or not this drug's in shortage. Uh, I think it's problematic because it creates a perception that FDA is picking and choosing where it chooses to enforce its compounding regulations. Those were very hard regulations to enforce. They were put in place in response to some strategies that resulted with contaminated compounding products back in 2012. Uh, Congress you know, pushed back on a lot of those regulations, and this was one of the more difficult things I did when I was commissioner, trying to enforce those new 
new laws and new rules because a lot of these compounding pharmacies are prominent uh, businesses in local districts. So you get a lot of pushback from congressmen. If FDA creates a perception that they're stepping back based on policy considerations and potentially cost considerations around these drugs, um, you know, potentially ahead of an election, I don't know why they did it, uh, it, and, it, and it creates a perception of picking and choosing where they where they enforce these laws. That's going to make Congress more likely to try to step in to block them in the future. So I think it's a mistake for them to back away from the enforcement.